Creating a Google Form is a pretty easy task and a great way to collect data. Google recently changed their Forms interface though, so let's take a look at how we now create a form. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you're in Google Drive, and when you're in Drive, click the Create button. And in the Create button, just below Spreadsheet, you'll see Form as one of your choices. So here I am, creating a form. So the first thing I need to do is choose a, um, or give it a title. So let's say I'm going to be um, collecting some sort of um, um, information from my parents. Maybe I want to get contact information or something like that. So I could say parent contact info. So I got a title. And then I, the next thing I need to do is choose a theme. And it's totally personal preference, whatever you prefer. Um, I'm going to just keep it simple, though, and maybe go with this Argyle one right at the top and click OK. So now what I need to do is kind of start at the top and work my way down. The first thing for our Natomas Charter School settings is you can set it up so that you have to have a Natomas Charter School account in order to complete this form. Now this is great if maybe only staff members or only students are completing the form, um, but if you're going to have parents complete the form, that's definitely something you want to uncheck. So I went ahead and unchecked that. One little um, word of warning though, even if you're having students or um, staff members complete the form, you're going to need to make sure to let them know that they have to log in before completing the form. So really this is only a checkbox that you might use if you absolutely have a form that you absolutely only want employees or, or students to be able to fill out. Um, kind of as a rule of thumb, honestly, I just leave it unchecked because it gets kind of confusing for people. The next one says automatically collect respondents in Thomas Charter School username. This basically just will create a field in your spreadsheet showing the username of who filled out the form. Once again, they have to be logged in in order to complete the form for this particular one. Um, and if you want your data to be anonymous for some reason, then this would certainly be something you would leave unchecked. I'm just going to leave them unchecked for my form. Below I have the title of my form, but just below that there's a box where I can put in the direction. So please complete the form. to provide your contact information. So I have some directions there. Then in this first box, um, I have my first question and it has an area that I can put in a title. So I might just put in last name. And in the little area that has help, help text below it, I can put in like a follow-up question. So please provide your last name. This is defaulting to multiple choice, but I want this to be a text question. So the different types of questions that you have here, text is just a single text field. Paragraph text gives them more room to write. Multiple choice, they can choose only one thing. Check boxes are, they can choose multiple things. Choose from a list is kind of like multiple choice in the sense that they can choose different things from a list. Scale is like a Likert scale where you can do a rating. And then a grid allows you to kind of have multiple choices with columns and rows. But we're, usually you're just going to probably use, honestly, the first four. So I'm going to say text for this particular question. And I want a required question. They have to fill this out. And I can click Done. Then below that, I can add another item. So I want to do something for first name. So I'm going to add another text box. And then below that, I could put a little question, please provide your first name. Once again, required question, and I can hit done. And then I have one more question. I need their phone number, let's say. So I'm going to say phone number. Please provide your phone number. And then I can say required question, and then done. Now let's say I want to add a question about maybe that phone number I need to know, is it like a cell phone number or a landline or something like that? I could add one more question, multiple choice. Um, what type of phone is this number? And I don't really need help text for this particular one, so I'll just won't put anything in there. And then I can go through and put in my options. So cell phone, um, landline, business phone, etc. Whatever is going to make sense for your question. And once again, I can make this a required question and hit done. So I have basically up here at the top, I have those boxes unchecked. I have the basic title information for my form and then the questions I want them to complete. You can rearrange your questions, by the way, too, if you realize that you did them out of order just by dragging and dropping. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put mine back up here so they're in the order that I want them. 
And then towards the bottom here, you have a confirmation message. So when your um, respondents complete the form, they're going to get a message. And it's basically set up to your response has been recorded, which works a lot of the times. But you might want to change this to be more customized, and you can do that here. Maybe thanks for completing the form. If you have any questions, please contact Joe Wood. And as you can see, I have all my typos here, so I can go ahead and just use, you know, right click and choose the right word. There we go. And if you want, you can put a little link on the form that will allow them to submit another response. But if you only need them to submit once, that may be something that you want to uncheck. So I have that all filled out. Now, the last thing I need to do, though, before I leave this, is I need to make sure I want to tell Google where I want this data to go. In the old version of the form, it automatically went to a new spreadsheet. Um, you have some ability to customize that in the new version of Google Forms. But I'm just going to click Choose Response Destination. And this is where I can do a new spreadsheet or a new sheet in an existing spreadsheet. Um, I'm just going to leave mine at a new spreadsheet. Um, and if you want to set that up as something that always happens, you can check mark that box. Um, but I just have mine set up as new spreadsheet, and I'm going to click create. So now when this form is filled out, it's automatically going to go to a new spreadsheet. That's where all the data is going to go. Now in terms of how you get this out to your recipients, you can do one of two things. You can click send form, and then you can actually enter email addresses here. So if I wanted to send this to all of our teachers, I could say, or all of our staff, sorry, I could send it to NCS All, for instance. And everyone's going to get an email message with this particular form. That's one way that you can do it. Another way that you can do it is you can actually go to View Live Form. And this link you could copy and either put in an email or you could maybe post on your website. Maybe it's um, something you want people to click on and get to the form. So it's, it's completely up to you. But whether it comes via email or it comes via something that they've clicked, the person will come to this particular form and basically what they'll do is they'll put in their information. And then they put in their, so let's say I put in my phone number. There we go and they click Submit. And so now what ends up happening, if I go back to Google Drive, I have two new documents that are showing up at the top, one being the form that I created, Parent Contact Info, and the other one being the responses from that form. And when I click on the responses, what I can see is that data is coming in. It gave me a timestamp, shows me their last name, their first name, what, whether it was cell phone or landline or whatever, and the exact phone number that they had. So, and like any other Google Doc that you have, this is something that can be shared. Um, by default, it's private only to you, but if you have someone you're collaborating with on this particular project, um, you can certainly go ahead and, you know, put in their email address. Like, let's say I'm going to work with Anita Schwab on this. Um, oop, I put in the wrong Anita. That's going to work with Anita Schwab. Now, when I hit share and save, she's going to have editing rights to this particular spreadsheet. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about creating Google Forms. But that's sort of the basic tutorial.